Do you want to like dig into some of the key model hyperparameters that we might want to work with when we're uh, configuring it, an XGBoost model? Yeah. Um, so, so you've got hyperparameters that deal with the tree structure, right? And, and so generally you want to make what people call weak trees. Weak trees are trees that don't go very deep. And then uh, you want to have the subsequent tr trees correcting those issues. So you can, you can deal with how deep the trees go, or you can deal with how many uh, samples or rows would get split into a, a, a level and stop splitting once those get to a certain size. So, so that controls the tree structure. There's some regularization hyperparameters that you can control as well. So that would make it so that you pay less attention to certain columns and prevent overfitting that way. There are some hyperparameters that let you deal with model weights or classification weights. So if you've got imbalanced data, you can deal with that. Um, and then there are uh, other, like another hyperparameter that's common is, is the number of trees or estimators that you have. So again, that's how many times you hit the ball. And that's related to another hyperparameter, which is called the learning rate. So the learning rate is you can think if we go back to our golfing metaphor, if you've ever golfed and you try and hit the ball as hard as you can, sometimes that doesn't work very well. I, when I when I was taught to golf, it was like hit the ball like at eighty percent, so you're consistently hitting it. You're not like squeezing as hard as you can, right? And and so, um, you know, if you're hitting the ball as hard as you can, you might overshoot it sometimes, and so you might overshoot the hole. And so this learning rate is saying. Well, we, in the case of a decision tree, we, we don't even have, if we can hit as many times as we want, I mean, we could take our putter out there and we could just keep putting the whole time uh, as long as we have more trees and, and you'd eventually get to the end. Now, there are pros and cons to that, right? You, you might have more trees, so that might take, a, when you need to make a prediction, that might take a little bit longer, but you, you can make a decent model. And, and so there are a lot of these things in machine learning, there's trade-offs and balances. And, and so with evaluation techniques you can figure out you know what what combination of hyperparameters will give you a decent model i i found that xgboost actually in, in my experiments slightly overfits out of the box and even considering that it does overfit out of the box it tends to give better results than a, a lot of other models do but with a little bit of tuning we can get it uh, to actually perform better uh, than the the out of the box model. What kind of uh, tuning would you do? So so if we have this slight overfitting typically out of the box, then what are your kinds of key next steps um, to rein that in? Yeah, uh, so, so it depends on on what your what I guess uh, computers you have access to and how much time you have. Um, like in the book, I show an example of doing using the, using the hyper the hyperop library and the nice thing about the hyperop library in contrast with like a grid search uh, scikit learn so scikit learn is a popular python library for for doing tabular uh, data machine learning and scikit learn has what's called a grid search and the idea there is you have these hyperparameters that control how the model works and then you can say, okay, the, the, these are the specific hyperparameters that I want to evaluate. So for depth, you might say like, maybe we want to look at a stump, right? So we, we let the depth go to one. Maybe we, we say the depth can go from like one to 10, or maybe we also include unbounded in there as well. And then, you know, if there's five hyperparameters and each of them have 10 different uh, uh, options for them, you've got this combinatoric explosion. Every time you add a new hyperparameter, you're basically doubling the time that it takes to uh, evaluate and, and see which combination is the best. And so you can use some other libraries like Hyperopt is one that I like to use. And, and the idea with Hyperopt is that rather than specifying, here's the 10 different options, I provide a distribution. And it's going to do some Bayesian modeling to say, okay, what, what, how did my performance uh, result when I chose this value from the distribution? And if it's okay, I'm going to exploit that area and try other values around that. But every 
once in a while it will do an exploration what will sort of jump back and try some other place that it might not have found to see if if, if there might be a it might be like in a local minimum or something like that and so hyperopt is a library that you can basically set these distributions and you can say this is how many times i want to run and then you can track the performance as it's going over time um, that's one of the tools that I like to use. And then if, if you don't have a lot of time, I've got uh, in my book, I, I show uh, stepwise tuning. The idea there being that instead of doing this combinatoric explosion, we might sacrifice, maybe we will get into a local minimum, but we're gonna say, let's just look at uh, hyperparameters that deal with the tree, first of all, and, and try and just adjust tree hyperparameters for a little bit. And since there aren't that many of them, it, it might not take very long. And then we'll look at regularization hyperparameters uh, and just optimize those and rather than looking at the combination of both of those. And I found that, de again, depending on your data size, that can save you a lot of time. You can get a a decent model that is better than your out-of-the-box model with, with relatively little effort doing that.